In the next few videos, we will explore the graph tools inside Illustrator. It's one of the less commonly used features in the program. That's most probably because of the fact that people tend to use Microsoft Excel to create graphs, but you can do it in Illustrator as well. So let's take a look at the graphs that can be created by designers in a design piece of software. In case you're not familiar with graphs, let me just point out that graphs let you communicate statistical information in a visual way. And in Adobe Illustrator, you can create nine different types of graphs and customize them to suit your needs. The whole family of graphs sits right here in the Tools panel. And as you can see, the first option we get here is the Creative Cloud Charts. But since you have to be a member of Creative Cloud and it only works with the online services, let's skip this for now and move on to the first graph tool available for everybody who has Illustrator as old as its 1993 version. The first graph tool, which creates a classic column graph, has a default shortcut of the letter J. With the tool selected, we can create a graph just like we would create any object in Illustrator. We can click and drag to create a graph. And notice that holding down an Alt or Option will create the graph from the center point. And holding down the Shift key will constrain graph's proportions. The second way of creating graphs would be to click anywhere on the artboard and enter the values for width and height. Notice that the tool you use initially determines the type of graph, but you can easily change the type of the graph later on. So now that we created our graph, it's time to populate it with some data. And you can enter the graph data in this top left field right here. But you don't have to click on it every time you want to enter or adjust the value. You can simply click the cell you want, enter the number on your keyboard without even looking at the top left field. And then either click on this tick to apply changes or press enter on the numeric keypad. But if you don't need to preview the changes in your graph every time you enter new data, you can just enter the value and then press tab, enter another value and again press tab, and continue the process until you have all the data you need and then press the Apply button to see the graph update. By the way, if you press Enter on the alphanumeric keypad, Illustrator will create new subgroups of data. So if your keyboard doesn't have the numeric keypad, better just to use the Apply button. So let's enter some more data. And if you go too far, you can always remove data from a specific cell by clicking on it and pressing delete just like so. So this is how you can manually enter data in a graph. In Illustrator, we can also import data from a separate file. And I gotta tell you that when you want to import an Excel file, you might come across various issues. For instance, Illustrator might tell you that the file selected has no data or is not available, so it's best to use a plain text file. To import data from a file, we have to click on this first button right here. I got a text file ready and waiting for me, so let's preview what's inside. I've entered types of design on the left, years on top, and number of created projects in a specific year. Now I want to bring it into Illustrator and create a nice graph out of it to put it, for instance, on my website. So I'll just hit open. Now Illustrator imports the data from my file and when I click apply, something is wrong. I mean, the graph doesn't look right. So what's going on? First of all, each and every number Illustrator imports is mapped to a graph. It doesn't know whether it's a date or a plain number, so what we can do is we can enter a quotation mark in front of the years. and move the dates where they need to go, because notice that these empty cells right here correspond with the empty spaces in our text file. These are the spots where the tab key was hit when creating the data in the text file. 
So let's tidy everything up. Apply all the changes. And now our graph starts to look better. For now, don't mind the fact that the labels down here don't look properly. This is a glitch in Illustrator we can easily fix, but we will do it in the design part of the class. What's also worth trying is this transpose option right here, which switches the places of our labels like so. This option right here that says switch X and Y will change the X and Y axis in the scatter graphs. That's why for now it's grayed out. We can control the number of decimals and the width of the cells using this cell style option. The max number for decimals is 10 and the max number for cell width is 20. If you want, you can revert your graph right here. And we are already familiar with the apply button. Before we move on to the next video, there is just one more thing worth mentioning. If you want to add some data to your graph, the quickest way to do it would be to right click or command click on a Mac on your graph and choose data. This will allow you to get back to the data box and make the changes you want. So this is how you can enter and manipulate data in a graph. In the next video, we will take a look at the types of graphs we have in Illustrator. So stay tuned.